Hello students, welcome to the online class of Geography of class 10. Today is the last class for this chapter in terms of explanation of the topic uh, of chapter 1 resources and development that is the 8th class and the today's topic that I am going to discuss today is uh, related to the erosion that is soil erosion, causes of soil erosion, types of soil erosion and lastly how we can conserve the soil. Now from the junior classes we have studied about that the term erosion it is basically the transportation of the uh, eroded part from one region to the another region. Now just see this picture. What does it indicate? That the soil structure is not even throughout the surface. It's not even. Here the soil is totally washed out or is being drained out. And that is the reason here we are having that less level means we are having a variation of the soil structure. So, what is soil erosion? It is just the removal of the top layer of the soil and who are basically engaged to do this part of, uh, that is uh, this activity, natural activity that is done by the natural agents, running water and wind. And what is the resultant of it? The top layer of the soil consists of more nutrients, the maximum nutrients, the humus, so when it is being drained out, when it is being blown away by the running water, by the wind, what is the resultant? The soil fertility is totally wasted or we lose the maximum soil fertility. Now the next part of it. Just see this picture. What does this indicate? This is a picture showing a slope of land. Now just see this. It is showing the excessive rainfall with a velocity of the wind. So what does this indicate? that what are the factors that influences soil erosion. Now these are the natural factors we term it as a physical factors of soil erosion. So what are the major physical factors of soil erosion? Number one is slope of land. When there is a elevated area and if the area is devoid of any sort of vegetative cover the soil is open to the nature. So continuously it will be drained out or it will be blown away by the uh, intensity of the rainfall through the uh, that is excessive rainfall that is surface runoff or due to high velocity of the wind. So these are the three basic factors related to the physical factors or the natural factors. Now next what is this? What picture we can see? We can see over here it's entirely a green belt and here it is totally a deforested area. So here the soil is open to the nature. Next, see this picture. It's a grassland area and cattle are randomly grazing out the land. Next, it is a cultivable plot and here the plot is basically flooded out with the water. Next picture, we can see that it's spraying off chemical fertilizers and pesticides. So what does this indicate? These activities are done by the human society. So these are the human factors which is basically uh, responsible for the soil erosion. So let's see what are the physical, uh, sorry, the human factors. The human factors number one is deforestation, then comes overgrazing, then over irrigation, unscientific farming methods, overuse of fertilizer. Now overgrazing, over irrigation overgrazing continuously if we just randomly allow the herds to graze out so if the areas are being devoid of the grasses the soil will be open and next it will be drained out or it will be removed by the natural agents excessive uh, logging of the water due to over irrigation makes the soil alkaline and saline and then it loses its fertility so here also it is uh, creating the erosion part when we are just spraying out uh, fertilizers or pesticides, the resultant, the natural nutrients of the soil is totally being spoiled out or it's being destroyed. And unscientific farming, continuously if we cultivate one type of crop, the soil nutrients that can regain its uh, nutrients back, if we just uh, do it in another way, that means if we rotate it, 
uh, instead of growing cereal regularly if we grow pulses also one after the other in a alternative manner so it will not degrade the soil or it will not erode the soil so unscientific farming method is also one human factor that is responsible for soil erosion now just next topic is related to the soil erosion types now just see two pictures that is given over here you can see this is a flat terrain and the soil is devoid of any sort of vegetative cover so maybe due to surface runoff or maybe due to high velocity of the wind a part of land a sheet like structure has been eroded away and just see this picture it is comparatively a little bit elevated it is not a level land like this and here also it is devoid of vegetative cover but the land has developed a gully or a channel or a deep crack like structure so types of erosion are of two categories this is sheet erosion this is gully erosion now the first what sheet erosion erodes the flat terrain due to surface runoff during heavy rainfall and the eroded land that means this land if we just reclaim out this part we can uh, use it for the agricultural activities next there is no such specification that which type of soil will be there where sheet erosion is prominent it is there for all the types of the soil next comes the gully erosion now it erodes the uneven terrain it is the uneven terrain it is very easy to develop the cracks if it is a slopy area next the surface runoff scoops out the narrow and a deep channel it's scooping out the narrow and the deep channels and the land becomes unfit for the cultivation and that's why it is termed as bad land topography it is also named as ravines in the chambal basin of madhya pradesh which is totally a barren land because it is unfit for agricultural activity and chambal basin as i said it is a zone of lateritic soil soil sorry it is a zone of lateritic soil so the areas which is having a lateritic soil lateritic soil is basically found in a little bit elevated area with a heavy rainfall region and that is the reason the top layer is being continuously removed and it's uh, uh, that is produced by the process of leaching and that's why it develops cracks in this order make deep channels in this order so it is specifically specifically present over the lateritic soil so these are the two types of erosion sheet erosion and gully erosion now the next was sorry the next topic that i'm going to discuss today is related to you can see the pictures that is coming one after the other is related to what are the measures to conserve the soil now by this picture we can see that few hands are planting the sapling so what is this this is afforestation now next comes you can see it's a agricultural plot and the edges of the agricultural plot we are having the growth of the trees so what is it it is a plantation of the shelter bells what does this indicates when the harvested area is open that means the harvested field is open to the nature and if the trees are there so the resultant the velocity of the wind will be retarded over here or will be restricted over here and the soil is not open directly because the roots bind up the soil so as a result there will be very less quantum of soil energy now this you can see it's a hilly track and some stairs like structures are there this is termed as terrace farming here you can see the picture it is similar to this but there is a bit difference here the steps are been constructed by cutting the mountain and here naturally according to the height the cultivation is done now this is termed as contour plowing now there is a new term that is contour contour is an imaginary line that joins the places having the same elevation over the land surface so here we can see it is having a similar elevation here it is having a similar elevation here it is having a similar elevation and that is why it is not in a entirely a geometrical design here the structures have been 
different because they are following whether it is a level land or whether it is a wavy structure they are following the elevation naturally but here we do it in a man made way to uh, make the steps so this is terrace farming and this is contour plowing so our next just see the uh, points that has uh, been depicted out with the pictures afforestation plantation of shelter bell terrace farming contour plowing now you see some more pictures that will give some other ways of soil conservation now here you can see this is a cultivable ground and the field is being cultivated with the crops but in between we can see some two different colors one is light green another one is dark green so one is indicating the crops that is the agricultural crop and another one is termed as cover crops or strip crops that means either a strip of grasses are grown or some other crops are grown in between the agricultural crops why it is so when the fields are being harvested out these crops binded up the soil so this is termed as cover crops or strip cropping now this is another field it's a agricultural plot but it has been kept fallow now you know about the term fallow now when any field is kept fallow that means it's open to the nature so it is very easy to erode the soil but if we do this bunding of the fallow field that means a small uh, bunding structure is there if we make such small structure then the continuous runoff will be retarded and the wind will be unable to drain out uh, that is blow out the winds the loose particles from the soil so this is termed as bunding of fallow fields and here the picture is showing about the irrigation system one is drip irrigation and another one is sprinkler irrigation so if we practice this then the water logging will not be there and it will not make the soil saline and alkaline so these are the other ways of soil conservation that is strip cropping crop rotation is another continuously if we are rotating the crop once for the cereal once for the pulses so naturally the soil will regain its nutrients it will not reduce it will not increase the rate of soil degradation next comes bunding the fallow fields next it is drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation and after that there are some questions related to the soil conservation first of all let me show another part of it some uh, more ways of soil conservations are there now mulching fields you can see this one after the harvesting of the crops is some stock of the crops are left on the fields stock means the remnant of the harvested crop that is not needed which just acts like a hay or a fodder for the animal if some part is left out on the field and we start our next cultivation based upon this because by that time this will turn up into a humus so if this part is left out on the field what will be the resultant the soil will not be open to the nature and erosion will be reduced and this is construction of the check dams or embankments if this is embankments of the check dams the resultant the continuous flow of the water will be reduced over here so this will reduce the soil erosion so these are some more ways of soil conservation that is mulching fields and check dams now some worksheet uh, some questions are there in the worksheet number 1 why is the use of excessive irrigation water harmful for the soil already i described it in my discussion how can crop rotation help in maintaining the fertility of the soil third differentiate between the types of erosion and next is human beings are the sole factor for soil erosion analyze it and lastly explain the natural factors leading to soil erosion so these are some questions related to the topic the entire topic of the first chapter from my side i have completed the next class will be related to your exercise ncrt exercise question answers 
board questions previous years board questions and i'll show the plotting of the soil types of india which is there in your syllabus if you are having any doubts related to the topic that i have discussed today just mention it in the comment section and obviously thank you for following today's class